Is everybody set? Just before I start, uh, I'll at least uh, be able to give you Adrian Diaz, ADR, IAN, Diaz, D I A Z, uh, Chief of Police. We good on sound? Okay. Today I wanted to give you an update on 14 home invasion robberies that we've been working on since June. Uh, earlier today, we served several uh, warrants, five separate warrants at five different locations, and we made five arrests in those, uh, in those warrants. We, actually, we also made three other additional arrests on different charges, uh, one for a Des Moines robbery, one for also felony in possession of a firearms, as well as one for a warrant. The five uh, arrests that we've made that were part of the home invasion uh, robbery were arrested for robbery one, and we're looking and seeking uh, what other charges might end up being. And I just want to say thank you to all of those that were part of this operation. It requires a lot of uh, support. Uh, we had FBI as part of it. We had Lakewood SWAT. We had our Marshals Task Force and multiple other SPD resources, but mainly our robbery unit, our gun violence reduction unit, our narcotics, our community response group, and our intel groups. This was a very important and well-planned out process. And in that, I want to make sure that people have some awareness. We recovered 14 guns, handguns at this point. We are still serving other additional warrants, but 14 handguns are now off the street. We will test those guns to see if they were involved in any of the shootings that we've had over this course of this year and previous years. The reason why that's important is because some of these guns could be, have been used in some of these other cases. Some of the people that we've had contact with uh, as part of these arrests uh, were people that were concerned or names came, came up in, in additional cases. We also, uh, at this point, uh, we'll look and review if they were involved in any other potential cases. While we have 14 additional or 14 cases right now, we're currently also assessing if there were other cases. We will right now we have one juvenile, and seven appear to be adults. Uh, so that is the uh, makeup of the, of the actual uh, people that were arrested, and all males at this point. Uh, we will continue to work these cases to see if there's any additional people from our interviews and collecting of evidence to see if there's any, uh, anybody that is still outstanding. But at this point, uh, we are very happy that we have made these arrests and that we're going to continue uh, to work these robbery cases as well. Open up for questions. Can you tell us how you got to this point of making arrests? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, and, we'll, and I'll give you just a little bit of information. So June is when we initially had the first uh, uh, home invasion robbery. Uh, we had a couple in July. And as we started to compile that information and uh, suspect information, um, we started to actually see what uh, was actually kind of the trend that, that was leading to us. Um, and then from that, uh, I'll, I'll leave our, our, our probable cause statements to get more in depth of, of what that looks like uh, because there's a lot of investigative work on that. And I, I just truly want to say that some of the detectives work on this, the search warrants that, that they were able to produce, um, you know, Everything from phone records to all sorts of other things uh, will be part of that investigation. And I just, uh, it's very impressive to just see their diligent work on this. Uh, but they were able to identify five people uh, that were the main uh, associates of the, or the main culprits of this, and uh, were able to put search warrant, or not search warrants, arrest warrants together, uh, signed by a judge for us to actually initiate their arrest. How old is the teenager and how are the people related, like cousins, brothers? Uh, that I don't know the relation between the, the five. Uh, the juvenile uh, was, I believe, 17 years old um, and, uh, and will probably, you know, as they get charged, the more additional information will come out. Uh, and uh, not sure their past record, not sure if they've had, what, what other criminal history they've had, but uh, uh, right now the other seven uh, do. One was wanted for a Des Moines robbery, um, so we know not necessarily for our robbery, but but for another uh, outside city as well. Have the suspects given any indication on um, why they were targeting the Asian American community? Um, and have you guys gotten any indication that this might be a hate crime at all? Well, that is one of the things that we are actually looking at what that charge could be. Potentially, it could be a hate crime. Uh, we are still, but we're working through that. We have to make sure that 
Uh, we work with the prosecutor's office to make sure that we meet all those elements and they feel confident in, in them moving that case forward. But that is actually one of the things that we are looking at charging them with potentially a hate crime. Uh, we know that we have a robbery one uh, that they are being booked on. We're not sure why the, the, uh, the Asian community was targeted as part of this. Uh, there are certain things that sometimes uh, lend uh, to a community that might be impacted. In previous years, about four or five years ago, we had uh, uh, a, the Asian community was impacted where people were being followed home from casinos um, because they have uh, access to cash on hand. And, uh, and so sometimes those factors do play a role in a community, whether they keep cash in hand, they keep cash in their house. Um, so those are things that, they're, that we're currently you know, investigating as part of that. Uh, but those are sometimes those factors that actually play into that. One more question? Um, Chief, or, unrelated. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask unrelated. This is the first time, you know, since we've had two body cam instances that come out. Mm -hmm. The Times has reported about the SPD not renewing the contract with it. Just what are your thoughts about this, given the comments that are made by Officer Arterer and the other comments made by an officer on body camera to have this news come out? Can you, can you shine a little bit more light on this situation? Yeah, as part of our accountability ordinance, there's not much I could say because at the end of the day, I'm the final arbitrator of discipline. So in order to not impact any case, if there is some level of discipline, I want to make sure I respect the process. Uh, so, but with that said, uh, you know, those are under uh, Office of Police Accountability. Those came from, uh, well, the, uh, the Officer Otter's case came internally uh, from our own uh, um, personnel. And then on the second case, it came from uh, uh, an outside organization, a nonprofit, um, immediately end up having certain actions to put the officer on administrative leave. And, uh, and so uh, very clear, different types of cases, uh, but very complicated. But I know that it's created some huge impacts in our Asian community. I've been meeting with the Asian community. I've been meeting with the Indian community, the South Asian communities, uh, and having extensive conversations and really listening sessions. Because at the end of the day, there's not much I can say, but there's an opportunity for me to listen and understand uh, what the community's concerns are. Just for clarity, Otter, is he on administrative leave as well? Or is he, just the officer in the other case? Right now, he's been administratively reassigned to a non-operational position, okay. so he's not on the streets at this time. Okay. In that same vein, can you tell us why SPD's contract with Trulia was canceled? And it was because of SPA bringing up certain issues. Um, are you looking into the timing of when those issues were brought up um, about the next month? After comments were reported. Yeah, so we are looking at all of that. I can tell you that there was not any relation to, to that. There was concern about, you know, from officers that had raised after hearing uh, that we were actually in a pilot testing phase of the, of, uh, of the system. Um, and again, it was literally a pilot testing phase because what we were actually seeing with the system that they couldn't, couldn't distinguish between the officer voice and a suspect voice. Um, but so it had some things that it needed to be worked out. Uh, and there was concern about, you know, officers feeling like they were potentially being surveilled. Um, and it wasn't uh, just Spog was raising it as part of uh, their membership, but really it was a lot of the officers after hearing uh, that we were looking at using this as, as, uh, as a product. But that still, still, even in a case like this, it wouldn't have probably been able to raise that issue because uh, they look at things that would, de what would be something escalating of a situation. So the terminology that an officer uses, the, um, you know, just the, sometimes the anger that might come up, so just the elevated heart rate, they can, you know, be able to, your voice inflections would change. And we wouldn't, in, even in this case, we wouldn't have used it in that manner. We were focused on how do we actually use it as an aggregate system to actually be able to train our officers better in de-escalation. So is there another company that you might bring in instead of well, we actually are still in discussions with Trulio about the product. As it gets refined, as it starts to really develop, um, there might be, we might end up using that system. We might not. We might go to something completely different. Um, and, and we might just, you know, at, at the end of the day, we're actually looking at a variety of different customer service because the, the whole part of that program was really about uh, what we part, call as a part of our EAQ, our Equity, Accountability, and Quality System, really to identify quality in our service. Um, and really try to see. And right now we're using a, another system that actually calls people back after they've called 911 um, and getting feedback on our officer conduct. And so that is actually, you know, right now just one of the products that we're using. Again, we're always kind of, uh, constantly evaluating what the benefits of each system uh, is. And some of them have their own restrictions out of that. So we're still working 
uh, through those details. And we'll probably have a little bit more information um, on the Trulio system as well. You kind of touched on when I first asked about you know, the whole body cam story and stuff. And you had conversations with the Indian community and you know, the Asian American community. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a two-parter. First off, just this video has gotten, let's just say, international mm -hmm. attention. This has really painted a tough light on this department. So how important is it for your department to have those conversations with this, these communities that are clearly hurting really badly about comments made by SPD officers? Yeah, you know, I've actually, even from the very beginning of, of the officer-involved collision, uh, I actually had conversations with the family, uh, the uncles, the, the brothers, uh, um, the mother was also associated with that. We've continued to keep them informed and keep them engaged in the process. Uh, we've actually uh, had conversations and listening with the fiance as well. Um, I know not only the family has been impacted, but the community has been impacted. Um, so it's important that we have those dialogues. It's important that, you know, we find ways to just listen and understand, uh, you know, the issues that are impacted because not all, you know, yes, there, this was an opportunity. They, 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 brought, they were come together because of an incident, but they were able to also highlight, you know, stuff in relation to training and stuff in relation to, you know, traffic enforcement and all of those other things that, that we hadn't heard before. And I think that that's actually some of the benefits of just creating dialogue and openness about this. So, um, and that's still more discussion still to be happening. It's not just a, you know a one-off thing and said okay because of this incident we're you know we've had that one uh, talk. It's really an ongoing conversation that we continue and the, and I know the mayor's office has been you know instrumental in being engaged in that process as well. So this isn't just going to stop for, from the from the conversations we initially had. Whatever one more OPA, question. Whatever the OPA and the CPC come up with punishment, because like you said, you can't directly comment on either investigation. But whatever punishment they believe is suitable, will you follow through with that? So it's it's really uh, it, it's really a process that goes through the Office of Police Accountability. From that Police Accountability, they uh, make recommendations of a pro, pro, proposed discipline, and uh, from that we will then evaluate all the merits of the case, um, and then that's when a decision. And again, I would be getting over ahead of myself if to say that that. That to say that there's automatically a, a, a complaint and that that's a sustained finding. I, that that's where the investigation process is. My only job is is once there's actually a sustained finding that I then uh, become the final arbitrator of the discipline. And back to so, the lobbies really fast. Yep. What would you say to the South Seattle community that's been since the summer worried that their their aunties, their mothers, their uncles are going to be victims? Yeah. Well, you know, I hope that this helps relieve that we've made some several arrests in this, that we hope that this actually stops a lot of the home invasion robberies, that we hope that also not only uh, does this, you know, make a huge impact in that we've gotten 14 guns off the street, that helps make the community safe, not just from the home invasion robberies, but potential shootings, and potentially those guns being used in a, in a, in a manner that we don't want, that can hurt and harm others as well. And so, like, we hope that this makes the community safe. We hope that it actually drives, that people know that the, we didn't, you know, just say that these are bad home invasion robberies, that we just kind of, you know, weren't able to actually, you know, fully make an arrest out of it. These cases, we made arrests. They did diligent work, that we worked hard on this case, and that the community knows that, that we're not going to stop until we uh, do whatever we can to make this community safe. And those detectives really put some good cases together, and I'm really proud of them. Uh, for doing that work. And they were just right, stealing money. Everyone. Just so. stealing money or jewelry or like like what were they allegedly taking? That I don't know uh, the specifics. I know that we recovered uh, lots of cash um, and uh, you know obviously guns uh, and we recovered drugs as well but those are we'll get more details out to you as, as we get them so thank, thank you everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it.